Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Today, let's make jerky. Well, this video has been a very long time coming. Probably the most requested video from you guys. Uh, if you follow me, you know that I've made jerky for years and I always get asked, what's your recipe? How do you do it? So why am I finally doing it this time of year here in the Meat Church Outdoor Kitchen? Well, this is jerky season and here's why. Elk season is in full swing. Uh, whitetail season for archery has opened here in Texas. So no matter where you're at, this is a time of year that you're cleaning out that deep freeze. And I know all of you hunters have some sort of venison roast in your freezer because you didn't know what to do with it. So we're gonna solve that today. So whether you wanna make this with venison or you wanna make it with beef, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're actually gonna do both today and they're both gonna be delicious. So super excited about this. And as always, uh, my recipe is down in the description, always on meatchurch.com and they are always just a guide. My way's not the right way. My way's just the way I did it today and it is definitely a way that works, but please put your tweaks on my recipes, make the flavors your own, make the thickness of your jerky your own and do what you wanna do. But let's, let's jump right in. So I've played with tons of marinades. Uh, today, we're gonna to make one that is really pretty straightforward uh, and again, can kinda of be a base. It's not gonna to be too spicy and uh, you guys can take it from there and kinda of do whatever the heck you want with it, make it more spicy or whatever. So this is kind of a classic recipe, but we're starting out with soy sauce. A little heavy handed there equal amount soy sauce and Worcestershire sauce. Now, I'm using the W sauce. You guys know I love the W sauce. I highly recommend that, by the way. If you don't have it, you can use regular. This tastes way better. If you wanna kick it up a notch, you can do the spicy version. A little cider vinegar, a little brown sugar. I'm gonna put some garlic and onion powder. A little paprika, smoked if you got it. My seasoning, naturally, Meat Church Holy Cow. It's what I use on all wild game. And I save the heat for the end. And the amounts for all this stuff in the recipe, but this is just a teaspoon of cayenne and it's two teaspoons of red chili flake. That's just gonna let you know it's there, but it's not gonna be too spicy. If your goal is to make spicy jerky, uh, at least double the cayenne or add a little more. You don't have to heat this up or anything. You're just gonna stir it until it's nice and incorporated. And what I recommend at this point, give it a shot. See how you feel about it, see how it tastes. I'm a huge fan of marinating all sorts of things, but you guys obviously got to do it on jerky. Honestly, delicious. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. So I'm excited about today's video because my followers know that I have been an organic user of Meet Your Maker products for years and years. And why am I so excited? Well, uh, obviously when you make jerky, uh, these sorts of products work, but uh, these products just became available in Academy Sports and Outdoors, which is a place that I love to shop. We're actually gonna use three of their products today. And as I go through everything, um, you get to make the choice if you wanna use these products or if you wanna use something else or a different tool. I will tell you along the way why I choose to use the tools that I use. Like first and foremost, we're gonna jump in on, on a slicer. I love using a slicer for jerky. Um, I used to use a knife to cut it, and it's very difficult to, to slice jerky thin with a knife, and I prefer it thin, so we'll talk about that as we go through that. But again, choose what you want. Let me bring some meat in here. So we're making beef jerky, and uh, we're making jerky with elk today. So I'm gonna use Eye of Round, I'll talk about that. And then I just wanna show you, here's some, Here's uh, some beautiful elk uh, that I had in my freezer. This is also eye of round, but you can kind of use, you know, any lean cut you want. So you can use top round, bottom round. Um, I've used flank steak before. You just want something that's really lean uh, because when you dehydrate the meat, you don't want all that fat in there. You want to dry it out. Uh, so in this, we're going to make two pounds today. That recipe works for about two pounds of meat. You don't have to be exact. This is uh, just over four pounds. So I'm going to use around half of it or so and then I'm gonna remove all this fat off of the back. I'm not cutting it in half because I want this to be a little bit bigger 
uh, to work with on camera. Probably about yay big. And then you just need to remove all this fat. Easy enough. So thickness of jerky, what do you want? I personally like my jerky pretty thin. I don't want a lot of chew to it. Uh, jerky is the one thing that I'll eat that sometimes gets caught between my teeth. Uh, only complaint I ever make to my dentist. So I like it thin, uh, but you can certainly slice it to your desired thickness, uh, especially depending on what type of tool uh, that you're using. So I'm gonna put this on here. Usually I will put the meat on, take a few slices and kind of see where I'm at and then just kind of adjust from there. So on this particular one, I'm going just under a five. I also have a bigger version where I go on four, makes pretty thin. Maybe a little thin. This is what we're working with. All right, well, we've got all of our meat sliced up. Um, you can leave it like this, uh, put it in the marinade and dehydrate it like this, but I'm gonna cut it in half just cause it's kind of a, it's kind of a big piece to be honest with you. But this doesn't really matter, just preference thing. Okay, now I've got my vacuum sealer here. I've uh, used the roll of bags and going ahead and started to make a bag. I'm gonna throw uh, the various pieces in here. I usually kind of move them around uh, because I don't want a real tight, um, I don't want, you know, like a crazy tight vacuum seal. Uh, that way I can move the meat around in here uh, to get the marinade on kind of all pieces of the meat, but don't worry about it being too perfect. And just so you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I love marinades. Um, I typically will marinate in a vacuum seal bag uh, to kind of make sure that I get that marinade in the meat uh, versus doing it in a really loose bag or a bowl or something like that. So just give the marinade a quick mix. Dump it in. I'm gonna work it around a little bit. You'll be able to do this more also after it's sealed. Open up my sealer here. Got it on moist food. All right, we're good to go. And you can see uh, the air's out, but it's loose enough that I can work it around. So I prefer to marinate overnight. So eight, 10, 12 hours. Um, I don't think you need any longer than that. But just like that, it's uh, has worked perfect to where I can work the meat around and be good to go. But we're not waiting overnight. I did some last night. So I've got the exact same thing here. I've got the beef in this bag and I've got um, elk in this bag. They're identical to the marinades I showed you. I did do one thing different here. Uh, instead of regular soy sauce, I actually used Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce, which uh, my description is a, is a soy-based barbecue sauce and it's delicious. So just an example of how you can kind of make my recipes your own, tweak things. So I'm gonna open these up, put them in a bowl, and then uh, we're gonna lay them out on these wire racks. Uh, to get them ready to go in the dehydrator. All 
All right, I'm just gonna lay these nice and flat. You wanna make sure they're not curled up or anything like that. They don't need to be spaced too far apart. They can be right next to each other. Uh, obviously, they're gonna shrink up um, as they cook. I'm gonna put all the beef on three racks or so, and I'm gonna put all of the elk on their own racks. We've got all of our meat on the tray, so let's talk about dehydrating this meat. So there's a lot of ways to do that. A lot of people in the Meat Church congregation have pellet grills, uh, and that's a way that I've certainly made it. Uh, the downfall of that is they most only go down uh, to a certain temperature, 165 in the case of Traeger. That's a great way to do it. Um, today I'm using uh, the Meat Your Maker 6 tray dehydrator. I make so much jerky, I've got uh, multiple of these, including a larger one, but they're really simple. Uh, the temperature range can go really low or really high if you are dehydrating other things like fruits. Clearly, we're not going to be doing that at the meat church. But I run 158, um, and it also is a time function, but I don't use that because it's just like my brisket and everything else. I like to fidget with it and check it along the way. Uh, the beauty of slicing as thin as we did is this will only be probably two and a half, maybe three hours. If you go thicker, then it could take you, you know, four or five hours, depending. So I'm gonna turn it on. All right, we're just gonna let that run, do its thing. We'll check it along the way. Um, you're looking for your desired consistency. So um, I don't want it to just break in half, but I don't want it to have too much bend either. So we'll check back in here in just a little bit. Well, it's been, uh, as you can see, just about two and a half hours. I've been checking the consistency uh, along the way and it's actually been like pretty even. This isn't too hot to touch, by the way. Pretty even between both, both cuts of meat. And so, you know, obviously you want, I said earlier, you want to cook this to like what you want it to be. Like I want it to be dry. I don't want it to be chewy. Uh, again, I cut it so thin. So, uh, because I, I like that personally. So there we go. That's really freaking good, by the way. Let me pull these out and we'll talk about them. That's the beef. And this is elk. So, I mean, they both look great, obviously. Uh, the beef was lighter, raw anyway, with you had the deep, dark color um, of the elk, super duper lean, obviously. And then, uh, you know, we put in the bachan's uh, Japanese barbecue sauce, which was, which was really pretty dark. So that's kind of the, the visual difference. Um, you can spray the racks before you put the raw meat on if you want. If your marinade's real sticky, you might want to do it, but in this case, the beef usually comes off pretty easy, so not a big deal. Um, I should have said before you put it in, when you, when you lay the meat on the racks, uh, that's your opportunity to put more black pepper or this red pepper flake if you wanna make it, wanna make it spicier, but. Very rewarding, by the way, um, especially on the wild game side, when you can harvest the animal and go through this whole process. Um, this flavor is awesome. So that just has a little bit of heat my kids will eat that. Um, like I said, if you want spicy jerky, add a lot more stuff to it. But I can actually taste the W sauce, soy sauce. Uh, I think pretty balanced seasoning. Like that is the winner. I've cooked jerky my entire life and have played with recipes over and over. Done everything from putting sodas in them. This is a down the middle of the road like winner recipe. So I really dig that one. Uh, let's just jump in over here on the elk. Elk is my favorite game meat, by the way, so this reminds me of being back in New Mexico at the Yu Bar. There's definitely a difference with the Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce that is delicious, so super good. Um, if you want to feel like you're on an episode of Alone in the middle of British Columbia, you've killed a big black bear, and you need to uh, preserve your meat for a long time on a much easier way like I did here in the Meat Church kitchen, I highly recommend this process. Also, I do this at Christmas. When I'm done with this, um, I'll vac seal little bags. And uh, when we were young, uh, we didn't have a lot of money and uh, we made gifts for Christmas. And so I've done this in the past. Um, I gift like smoked simple syrup and uh, people would appreciate this. So empty out your freezers, make some jerky, enjoy it, save some, gift it, uh, put it in stockings, give it to your family. 
and I promise they're gonna love it. If you like what we're doing, uh, like I always say, be sure to like and subscribe. Your subscriptions are how we continue to do these free weekly how-to videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next week.